Thank you for joining another episode of KISS TV, Keeping It Simple. Today we're going to talk a little bit about understanding the OpenStack configuration. And we're going to go through some of the details related to OpenStack's configuration. So thanks for joining us and let's get jumping right into the material. The easiest way to explain this will be to look at a rack and actual configuration of an OpenStack environment and kind of walk through some of those tools. Here we have, of course, at the top of the rack, your um, top of rack uh, switch that uses your network. No big deal there, right? Then we have our IP services offered through our OpenStack uh, environment. We're going to see things like Pixie, DHCP, DNS, NTP, things of that nature. Installation, automation, and scalability are often often offered by Dell Crowbar. Dell Crowbar does a lot of the automation related to OpenStack and this is a great way to get that installation. Now, just as a note, Dell Crowbar works very uh, well with the uh, build and manage the cloud here under OpenStack Chef. And Chef basically makes the recipes that Crowbar delivers. Event monitoring, alert ma management, um, Nagios, uh, Gangla, OpenStack, BMC. We're going to talk a little bit about the BMC part of OpenStack here when we look a little closer at the drawing. But that's event management. It's important to note that these, although associated with OpenStack as the projects, there is a fee often for an enterprise license of some of these software. Nagios is certainly one of them. And I believe this is spelt wrong. I believe it's N-A-G-I-O-S, just a typo there. Your image service would be offered by OpenStack Glance. How to build and manage the cloud we already talked about was OpenStack Chef associated with Dell Crowbar. Your dashboard and, or and orchestration can be offered by OpenStack Horizon. Another component that you might want to use in here instead or as a supplement there would be Manage IQ. Manage IQ. Identity management uh, uses some of the Keystone project, OpenStack Keystone. Cluster management, HA nodes, messaging, OpenStack Rabbit MQ. OpenStack Rabbit MQ. And then your storage nodes is OpenStack Swift. So looking down, so that's the general information about the configuration, the way it lines up. And then let's go ahead and look down through these nodes and see what they look like. So here you have, of course, you have your top of rack switches that are going out to your LAN. And, and you see uh, here you've got a, a cable running in, a couple cables running into your router as well. Uh, here you see node cluster switches. And the node cluster switches are here. These are represented as the nodes. So here you have an OpenStack compute node, OpenStack compute node. You also have storage object nodes here. So we're going to talk about those. That's what these cluster switches are for. And notice the blue and the red. Notice you have a blue and a red coming from each one of these uh, servers here into uh, the switch fabric. Now, important to note here, and we'll kind of do a zoom up here on what's coming out of the server. Coming out of the server, of course, is a KVM switch, uh, which is the yellow, represented by the yellow line. So that's your KVM. And then K orange or yellow. And then your red and blue are going into those top, excuse me, to those cluster switches that we just saw up here. All right? And then, um, whoopsie. And then this black is a what they call a BMC. And that's an alert management, similar to like a heartbeat, but not as limited as a heartbeat in a cluster environment. But it's sending information related to uh, OpenStack in the clusters. Uh, down into the cluster node itself into this switch fabric. And so if you notice here from your, and this is an important note, here we have a black, a black, a black, right? There's three and three. So we're running one black from, those are the storage nodes, one from here, one. So they're all going from there, but they switch off as to which one of these cluster switches they actually go to. So you got a firewall, KVM, WAN optimizer, of course, in there. And so that's kind of the wiring here, right? So you've got your nodes. So let's talk, shift back over here, 
talk a little bit more about what this looks like over here. Whoa, now isn't that an interesting picture? Um, so <laughs> let's see, I don't know why that did that, but um, we'll just continue on here and act like it didn't happen. All right, <laughs> so here we have um, our storage nodes. Now notice here we have an iSCSI block storage device here, right? So one of the cautions there is just make sure that whatever storage device you're hooking into the OpenStack environment, that there are available drivers for it. So it's no different than any other environment. We just have to be careful that the drivers are available. Then notice here we have object storage nodes. Notice these are just servers, servers with disks in them, typically configured as RAID 0. So we're sharing information back and forth, being managed here by the OpenStack Swift within these two nodes here. But they're servers with a bunch of storage disk in them and using object storage and not block storage. And we're going to talk in another uh, KISS TV episode the difference between object storage and block storage and how that truly impacts our infrastructure. We'll get into that in another KISS TV episode, so stay tuned. Then here you have your compute nodes. And remember, as you learned in OpenStack Basics, we have KVM uh, historically as a hypervisor. We have also in these compute nodes the capability of supporting multiple hypervisors. And it's running the Nova OpenStack. And it is the deployment node and KVM node of the environment. So these are the compute nodes. And there's however many you need that will scale out with your environment. Then of course you have an admin node here and you have a controller node here. And this is built on OpenStack Essex and there are newer uh, foursome for example is um, not foursome. Uh, <laughs> it's um, um, I can't I just the name just blanked on me but there's a new new version uh, the next version from Essex is come um, coming out starts with an F and for the life of me I can't remember I can't pronounce its name right now so um, anyways it's the new version so you just have to watch for the new OpenStack versions this version here you just have to see what's supported by the vendor that you choose this happens to be in alignment with the Dell crowbar and the, the reference architecture within uh, Dell so uh, that's basically uh, what the infrastructure and configuration of an OpenStack environment looks like. So as you can see here, not a whole lot of difference between what OpenStack looks like and what you're accustomed to in an infrastructure. The only difference is that a lot of this software here is open sourced, right, controlled, uh, but open sourced so there's no real costs associated with it or very minimal costs and it's very, very scalable. Uh, see the KISS TV episode on OpenStack Basics where we go into the the um, trade-offs between supported environments and non-supported environments. Well, thank you again for joining us for this episode of KISS TV, Keeping It Simple. Hopefully you have learned something today that you can plan and execute upon that plan. Have a great day.